Hello everyone. This is my theory for what Jigsaw Saw 3D Part 2 Saw 8 could have been. Now, for those who are probably unaware, whenever Saw 7 3D was in its development stages, the film was actually going to be split into two parts. However, this all changed whenever Paranormal Activity beat Saw 6 at the box office in 2009. Due to this loss, Lionsgate and Twisted Pictures decided to make Saw 7 3D a single film with the plot of Saw 3D Part 2's plot incorporated into it. Marcus Dunstan and Patrick Melton, who have been the screenwriters for Saw 4 right through to Saw 7 3D, have said that there were other elements of the original script that never made it into Saw 7 3D. They refused to talk about them to the press and fans should the producers ever decide to use parts of their unused script for later installments. As disheartening as that was to hear from them, it was probably the smart move to make. Even though the new screenwriters for Jigsaw and Spiral from the Book of Saw had written at least 100 scripts of their own for Jigsaw, I have reason to believe that elements of Patrick and Marcus's original script for Saw 3D Part 2 were brought into Jigsaw's plot. When you really think about it, Logan Nelson is not really all that different from Dr. Lawrence Gordon from Saw 1. They both have a strong medical background and are able to carry out surgical procedures. It is shown that they are fully capable of doing this throughout the franchise with Dr. Gordon. On the commentary for Saw 3D, it is mentioned that the original ending was going to have Bobby Dagan survive his game with Jigsaw. He would be in the hospital and Dr. Lawrence Gordon would arrive at his ward telling him everything was going to be okay and then the film would end. Saw 7 3D Part 2 was actually going to flesh out the rest of the story and tie up all loose ends from the previous movies. I really think that for Saw 7 3D, Detective Mark Hoffman was going to survive the film as well. The battle for Jigsaw's legacy would take place in Saw 3D Part 2. I think the police investigation plot and ending of Jigsaw was in the original script for Saw 3D Part 2. There are so many similarities to Jigsaw's ending and Saw 3D's ending. If you go back and watch the ending of Jigsaw, when Logan Nelson reveals himself to be a disciple of John Kramer to Detective Halloran, if Saw 3D Part 2 had have gone ahead as originally planned, the ending of that film would have had Dr. Lawrence Gordon revealing himself to Detective Mark Hoffman as an unknown accomplice to Jigsaw instead. In Jigsaw, flashbacks were shown of Logan Nelson when he was placed in the Jigsaw's original game and how he joined John Kramer's scheme. I personally think that for the original script it was meant to be Dr. Gordon who messed up John Kramer's x-rays, so it would later be revealed in Saw 3D Part 2 in much more detail another reason why he was tested. For Saw 3D Part 2, while Dr. Gordon was explaining to Detective Hoffman his involvement, where there would have been flashbacks from the first song of Dr. Gordon and Adam's game playing out. Then when Dr. Gordon escaped the bathroom, even though he didn't play out the game exactly as he was supposed to, John decided he shouldn't have to die over an honest mistake due to messing up his x-rays and the fact that he didn't kill Adam before 6 o'clock. Logan told Halloran 10 years ago in this very barn a game was played. Do you think it would have made more sense for Dr. Gordon to say to Mark Hoffman something similar? The room at the end of Jigsaw does have a resemblance to the bathroom from the original Saw and the creators did go out of their way to ensure references of the bathroom appeared in the film. The main example of this would be the door. The door is shown closing twice, similar to how John Kramer, Amanda Young and Dr. Gordon himself closed it in the previous installments. Also, the fact that earlier in Jigsaw, Anna and Ryan were shackled to pipes, just like Adam and Lawrence Gordon were in the original Saw. The bathroom trap from Saw 1 is implied to be the first ever game of John Kramer's that involved more than one person. However, Jigsaw had retconned this and revealed that it was not the original, but most likely the second or maybe third. Who knows at this point? However, Josh Stolberg and Pete Goldfinger changed all of this during the writing session. There are many reasons why these changes were made. The producers and fans wanted Carrie Elwes to return to the Saw franchise even though they had a lawsuit over the fact that Carrie Elwes didn't receive the full pay salary he was promised. This issue was resolved and later settled out of court. On the bright side, Carrie and the producers made up and put this predicament in the past where it belonged. This is how he ended up returning to the Saw franchise. Kerry said that he would only return for one last Saw movie and it had to be the final installment in the franchise. This is why Kerry Elvis only appears in Saw 3D. Jigsaw is actually a spin-off that reinvented the series to go in a different direction with a new story and set of characters, just like Spiral from the Book of Saw was doing. They wanted to cut ties to the previous movies but also reference them so that fans knew it was still in the canon and was not a reboot at all. The reveal of Dr. Gordon being an accomplice to Jigsaw all along actually sparked controversy and was up for debate just like Star Wars Episode 8 The Last Jedi. Fans, myself included, were not happy that Dr. Gordon was shown to be helping Jigsaw the entire time. Whatever we saw fans loved about the franchise is that we would always have our own theories 
on what would happen during the next installment and what the character's next motivation and fates would be. The fact that Dr. Gordon helping Jigsaw was a joke by the fans all the way back to Saw 2 was actually put into a script and made it into the film was a, as Eric Strickler said, slap in the face. We always loved how the Saw movies completely subverted our expectations in a surprising and intelligent way. It's just out of character for Dr. Gordon wanting to dedicate himself to helping Jigsaw after all that John Kramer put him and his family through. It would have made more sense if John Kramer was holding Dr. Gordon against his will for a new game in the future, just like he did with Detective Eric Matthews. John Kramer could have had Dr. Gordon perform the medical procedures as a forfeit for not fully abiding the rules of his game with Adam. That would have made a lot more sense than having him all of a sudden forgive and assist Jigsaw with his new games afterwards. So in a way, Detective David Tapp ended up becoming right in the suspicion of Lawrence Gordon before he was even tested to begin with. Saw 3D Part 2 could have had Dr. Gordon working with the police and internal affairs officer Matt Gibson and his partner Rogers to catch Mark Hoffman, just like Logan Nelson was helping the police to try and track down the possible new Jigsaw accomplice. It really is fun. It really is fun to speculate what they might have originally planned for Saw 3D Part 2's storyline. This is just a theory I come up with, but it certainly does help to connect the dots that correlate the plot of Jigsaw to Saw 3D Part 2's possible original script. I certainly think this is enough evidence to suggest that this was how Saw 3D Part 2 was originally going to play out. I would like to give a shout out to YouTuber CZ's World, who also has his own Saw theories that are amazing. He also does reviews on other horror films as well and provides excellent content. Whether you believe this theory to be true or not, I'll leave that up to you. So let me know all your theories as well. Do you agree with this theory? If you don't, then I actually would love to hear why and what you all have to say about it. Wash your hands, stay safe, goodbye.